everyone, welcome back to Deeper Roots. If you've been in church for pretty much any amount of time, you will know that there are some behaviors that the church would expect from you in your own personal life. Like, for example, don't put yourself in situations where you can find yourself tempted to sin. You can follow these rules, but sometimes people will falter and turn back to their sin. But since people will often fail their own walk in their faith, what can the church do to prevent these failings from happening? Can the church enforce or police its members to prevent them from sinning? We had the wonderful opportunity to talk about this topic, so if you'd like to follow up on this, or you have a new question altogether, we would love to talk about it. You can submit your questions at www.ibbvn.org slash deeperroots. While you're there, you can also see the rest of our episodes and also see where else we're streaming. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us here on Deeper Roots. Let's get to the conversation. Hey everyone, welcome back to Deeper Roots. I want to thank you for joining us today. We have myself, we have Pastor Luis, and we also have Esther joining us here today. And today we have another question that has been on our minds for the past couple weeks, and we just want to talk about this one. Uh, If you have a question that you would like to submit to uh, Deeper Roots, we would love to hear it. It's free and anonymous to to submit your own question, and you can do that at www.ibbvn.org slash Deeper Roots. That's going to be in the description if you need it. But the question that we have today is, what role does the Bible give the church in policing the behavior of its members. Pastor, do you want to get us started? Good. Thank you so much, Derek. I appreciate the opportunity to speak on this topic. Um, You know, as you guys know, we've always been uh, mentioning the comparison of many topics, right, to um, finding that balance, like, um, like trying to ride a horse, right, that you can either fall on the right side or the left side. And at the end of the day, it's still not what you want. You want to be on the horse. It doesn't matter whether you fall on the right or the left, you're off the horse and you're on the ground. And when it comes to so many topics, you know, and uh, recently we've been thinking about that one, you know, when it comes to, uh, for example, behaviors in the church. Um, of course, we teach a certain uh, uh, doctrine according to the Word of God. We teach principles. We teach the morality according to the Word of God. And our goal is for people to be able to know that and to not only know that, but believe it in their hearts and want to please God. But you know when it comes to situations right when uh, people maybe uh, fall or or they fail in some way or form uh, there's always the two parts where you have people say a we have no no say in calling out the sin Uh, that's one part and then one side and then the other side is like oh we need to be more forceful into policing the (laughs) behavior of people and we should punish and we should punish in a certain way if we find it and 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 if if they uh if they uh violate that man-made rule because we're having to separate between the man-made rules and the biblical principles right and and teachings uh so then the question is that uh what is the role of church of of god's institution here on earth the church made up of man uh, and pastor set by God and the leaders and stuff. What is our role as far as policing people's behavior? Is there a role to have or not? And how do we differentiate that between the biblical teaching of dealing or calling out sin when it actually happens? So, Esther, what do you think? Um, I think one of the responsibilities we have as a church is to be good role models i think that's where i would start meaning we set an example you know to the very best that we can (laughs) because we're all sinners and we all make mistakes um i also believe just thinking about i don't have my own kids but just thinking of my nieces advice you know where i'm not we're not talking about fundamental biblical uh, you know foundations here you know like the one thing I've learned with the years is you can't change people. Only God can change people. Mm-hmm. And even if the sky is blue and you say it's blue and people say it's pink, you can't change them. Even though you can take them out there, you can <laughs> show it to them, you can do all that. 
And just with time and experience, I've just realized that I can do my very best to give an example. I can give biblical advice and um, the rest. We just have to leave it to the Lord, you know. And, you know, and also when you do see sin, you do have to call it out. I think that's another, maybe that's something we can talk about later. Sometimes people say, well, I don't know. Um, it's none of my business, so I'm not going to say anything. And I, it, there, it is your business, meaning you don't need to go gossip about it. But when it comes to sin, one of our responsibilities is to cut it before it continues, meaning go and talk one of the leaders and say, hey, this is happening. And then the leadership has to take the, those steps. So mm -hmm. there is that responsibility, too, that we have. So what we're saying then is that the church does not have a, a, a biblical mandate to police people, but we are mandated to watch out for one for Correct. another when we do actually see someone going astray or doing something wrong, right? Mm -hmm. That we are to call each other out and, 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 and keep each other accountable, accountable but to isn't that. But isn't that policing it's no. very different it's very different because it's when you're act when you actually see someone doing something bad that is biblical for example right we're not talking about the policing would be for example we setting up rules like hey you guys can't go in in cars together with the opposite sex or you guys can never go out to movies unless there's parents and setting up rules because we want to make sure there's always eyes on every action that's being done um and we can't police that we can't police people's lives we can't people police what they do but once someone has gone astray and we know about it for example okay i see someone smoking weed and I see a young person smoking weed, do I have a responsibility to to call him out, to go up to him and, and say, hey, what's going on? Why are you doing this? It's not right for you. And and that's the, that's what we're talking about. It's not our mandate to have make sure every, we always have eyes and ears everywhere. But when we do, and and you know, this is what I always see, I always, going to your point, Esther, you know, you know, we believe in a sovereign God, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and on, 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 on Friday, I taught about David. And, uh, you know, when he got called out for his sin, mm -hmm. uh, for what he had done, it took him a year. Mm -hmm. You know, that's God's timing. Mm -hmm. Why did God choose a year? I don't know. But we knew it was God's doing because he sent Nathan to go in and confront him. Uh, and he gets confronted by Nathan, right? Um was there someone policing David and making sure he was out to the war when it was the time of the war for the kings to be out in war, not getting up at three in the afternoon? No, there wasn't anybody. Well, he sh should have known better. He should have known better to not let himself uh, down his guard. But then since he failed, uh, God sent someone to rebuke him, right? And, to, and, 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 and if we believe in a sovereign God, God is always going to allow things that need to be seen to be seen mm -hmm. and then the people who see those things are the ones that then have fall under a responsibility not before the church first but under the responsibility of God to do something about it because once I know about it and and I, I'm talking about firsthand not you know oh, so Someone and so says <laughs> you know but firsthand I do have a responsibility and that's different from policing because it's we're talking about one and one uh, responsibility of something that's actually happening because my point is this that you know you can go to the extreme and say set up rules and stuff to so make sure no where well, they never have an opportunity to do it but I always struggle with that because I say whoever really has no conviction of not doing something doesn't matter how many rules you set up you're still going to find a way mm -hmm. and you can argue well, that with will, so many yeah you're going to you can argue that with government as well you can set up all the laws in the world to make it harder but whoever really really wants to do it's still going to find a way mm -hmm. and that's the same thing so what's the, really the church's role the church's role is to preach and teach god's word and to provide an environment for the holy spirit to form conviction in people's hearts and hope that young people will actually come to the conviction of, hey, I'm gonna, I shouldn't do this, or this is not convenient. It's, it's what we're talking about, dis, uh, developing discernment, right? Mm -hmm. to, to discern, hey, you know, maybe 
I'm not going to say maybe if some kids don't have that problem going in a car and they don't fall into temptation that way, but maybe for you it is. Mm -hmm. And you know yourself and you know that me being alone in a car is a, a very red zone for me because I do get the the, the, the bubblies and everything and the never and, I, and in the hand and touching the hands and then I want a kid. And I, you know yourself. And that's what we're talking about, that our goal is for young people to be able to form convictions mm -hmm. and to be able to form self discernment so that they can choose to do right over wrong. Um, I mentioned this as we were getting ready for the podcast, right, about uh, Garden of Eden, right? God sets a, a tree and he's uh, out of many, many, many trees, he says, don't eat of this one. But he doesn't go up and put up a security system, cameras, a perimeter, a fence. He just allowed them to use their free will to whether choose to obey him or not. And I think as a church, that's what we need to do. We need to tell people tr the truth and allow them to live their lives and to choose right from wrong. But when there is sin, and if you're part of a church and, and you're living in that sin, there is a process, obviously, right? There's a process where uh, if I'm the one that sees it, I need to go up to the person. And that's what I hate when some, sometimes it doesn't happen because a lot of the times what happens is I see something. And uh, let's say again, I see someone smoking weed, mm -hmm. <laughs> a young person smoking weed. And instead of going up to that person, number one, which is the mm -hmm. first step, I go and tell everybody else mm -hmm. and complain to everybody else, except the leadership of the church mm -hmm. and don't tell the pastor or anything because I don't want to get him in trouble. Um, but you don't want to get him in trouble, but you're not willing to tell him anything about mm -hmm. it. And the Bible says the first step, go and tell him. You will alone. If it doesn't listen to you, go and take someone else. Mm -hmm. If not, bring it to the church. And mm -hmm. that's the that's the goal of the of, of, of the thing when you're talking about people within your your church, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's situations where it's situations that are people are not in your church anymore, but it does affect your church. Mm -hmm. And then there's a process where sometimes we just have to make sure we uh, things are clear and that people understand. Uh, so that the testimony uh, is 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 not affected, and that's some, sometimes we have to deal with that with it that way as well. But uh, what's un uh, very unfortunate and, and and sad is that many times that's the last thing that people want to do because there's a verse in Philippians chapter two that says everybody seeks after their own, mm -hmm. except for the things of Christ, mm -hmm. and that's what happens. Everybody seeks for their own goodness. Oh, I don't care as long as I don't care if the church burns down as long as I'm okay. And that's the and that's the and that's the unfortunate because that we're supposed to look after one another. We're mm -hmm. supposed to love one another to be able to call out one another when someone sins. But it is not the responsibility of the church leadership to set up a system where we get to police people and control mm -hmm. people. I think that's um, legalism, and I think that's uh, counterproductive in the end. And policing takes a step further, meaning the focus goes from compassion and love. To, I want to see what you're doing, right? Well, like it's a power, right? Power it's a power power. thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also a difference between policing and when you see someone who's doing their not something they're not supposed to, calling them out in a loving way, and then if need be, take other steps. But uh, the initial is just is just that, right? Like our hope is, you know, our job is not to police. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was, dang, I lost my train. I should have been writing, taping this down. <laughs> uh, so let me, let's go into some follow-up questions. Or do you have any other things no, that we want to add? Okay. How, uh, how long have we been going? Uh, we have been going for about 13, 14 minutes now. Okay. Uh, like so, 20 today. yeah, uh, this is going to be a relatively short episode, but I have a couple follow-up questions that I do wanted to ask. Um, so we talked about how uh, the church shouldn't be the one responsible for, like, uh, what, like what people are doing before they uh, end up committing some sin? Like you keep on bringing like up smoking weed, but we're not the one who is. Like we're not going to be the one. Like the church isn't going to be the one to tell you to not hang out with the friends who happen to have weed on them all the time, right? Or to police that, uh, like, you yeah. Police it. Someone can advise you and yeah. say, "Hey, those are not the type of friends you should be." And hanging I think out that with. is part of what we need. But, to But do like, you're too. not going to, you're not going to like I'm not punish call them, call them, and tax them yeah. every day and be like, "Who are you? Where are you? Where are Let you? me see where you are at. Who are you hanging out okay. with?" Yeah, yeah, that's um, the difference. Okay, so uh, 
we talked about like a lot of uh, the the teens side over like the young people side how is the response how should the response be different from the church between teens and adults good that's a good good question um when it comes to the uh, teens or young people uh, there's definitely two levels of authority there because <laughs> the first authority is at home. Mm-hmm. And uh, and even there, too, sometimes it's hard because sometimes you wish, like we were just commenting about youth group, uh, you know, they, there was a low turnout on Friday. And, you know, some people don't bring their kids to youth group because they leave them to uh, to do homework. And, and, you know, it's not probably the best uh, option for them, you know, for them to leave them home to do homework when they could bring them to youth group. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's like every Every kid in the world is one day going to give an account to Christ. Not every kid that goes to school is going to make it in their whatever they want to be. And that's just a fact of life. So many people go to college and then end up not doing what they dreamed of doing. Uh, So make sure that you get the spiritual part right. So that's one example where we wish we could just go and make sure everybody does it. We could say, if you're going to be part of our church... Uh, you every every one of the teens needs to be here if you want to be part of our church for Friday. We could do that, and that but that would not be biblical because yeah, we'd no. be uh, we would be uh, becoming an authority that we're not. But we can't advise it, and we can say, hey, please in sermons and preachings, say please bring your kids. You know, don't mm-hmm. leave them at home. You know, remember that. You know that the most important thing you can do is to instruct them in biblically. And sometimes you know that's the problem where you know we have those two levels of of authority that we have to deal with when it comes to kids because we're trying to teach the parents and the parents are the authority of the kids and we have an authority of the kids when when it comes to adults of course we can't go to running to their parents (laughs) Mm -hmm. of course but uh we do have the same responsibility calling them out or to keep each other accountable and when i say each other it's also us you know we as as leaders in the church also have to be uh kept accountable by other people uh when we're doing something wrong where we uh, had a bad attitude and then like i've given many examples i've been called out on things that where i forgot something or i said something wrong or uh i acted in in a in a way that i was not supposed to in a certain situation where i let my my anger got, get the best of me um and stuff like that and that's important for us to call each other out and to keep each other accountable mm-hmm. um so now i'm i'm curious about the consequences once someone does end up like breaching that trust that the that the members of the church might give to someone else right um let's say this uh this person has been caught smoking weed right or doing something else let's just like say the gay uh, has committed some sort of sin uh and i know that as a church we do have this thing called disciplinary action mm-hmm. how does that relate to uh, this idea of like the the authority that we do have okay so authority we do have is this when someone is in a sin uh the bible says in matthew 18 you go one-on-one first uh you try to win over the person right so uh, usually that's in a very private setting when people don't know about stuff like that and that's why i say when someone has firsthand knowledge of something going on you have to look at it as god having put you as the one to go up and talk to that person and many people don't and then instead they go and gossip gossip about it and then more and more people go know about it and then sometimes it gets to a point where it doesn't become private anymore Mm -hmm. it becomes public and it's hard because then you have to deal with it differently something public but let's assume go back to the private part i see esther smoking weed (laughs) Uh (laughs) I go up to her and I say, Esther, hey, I know school is tough, but come on. You know, this is not the way. She doesn't care. Anyways, I am going to do whatever I want. So I take Hermano Julio and I say, Hermano Julio, can we sit down with Esther? Because look, she doesn't care. And she continues Mm -hmm. and continues in that behavior. Then there comes a point after that that we take it to the church. And we have to say, we've talked to Esther, this or that. And she doesn't want to to listen. And there's there's a disciplinary action where either uh, she has to relinquish her responsibilities or whatever uh, disciplinary action has to be taken. But what if... What if uh, A doesn't happen where the person doesn't go and talk to the person and instead they gossip about it and they gossip about it and then it gets to a point where it's public. And by this time, Esther already left the church and she's not even here. 
then sometimes it gets so bad that we just have to clear the air and we have to just allow people to know there is no disciplinary action because Esther's no longer here, you know, but we have to make it sure that it's the, that, it, that the church knows what had happened and that it's clear about it, that we don't uh, agree with that kind of behavior mm-hmm. and that therefore we just want things to be clear about it and there is no disciplinary action action in, in that department either but yes if people would do the 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 what's it called the patron the pattern that the bible teaches in matthew 18 you know we would save from a lot of things having to kept to the church leadership but sometimes things get so messy because steps get um, disregarded get to the then and, and it's usually like that brother Derek it's unfortunate that the pastor is the last one to know yeah. and by the time uh, a pastor gets to know it's cleanup time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the mess is on aisle four and five and six and it's just cleanup time and cleanup is never easy and it's always hard and it's never pretty but sometimes we have to just clean up and make sure people understand what happened and try to save the testimony of the church mm-hmm. and everything but it's uh it's unfortunately so yeah that's well, so usually really the the purpose of the church isn't policing which a lot of people would like but that's ultimately not the case that we're supposed to do it is what is it um accountability accountability exactly so really like so ultimately the power that the church actually does have depends on the person on the individual like if this person intends to uh stay in church but they continue falling to their sin then the church actually does have some power on that person yeah. because they want to stay in the church but in order to stay in the church they have to uh, follow they have they have to like follow god's law yeah but if they don't ultimately want to stay in the church then they can just do what they want and once they get called out they'll leave and you know this is this is the other thing too and i'm going to say this um i'm going to make this statement uh, people know about the one the situations and the topics I've had to have brought up to the church but they don't know about the many many others mm-hmm. that have been dealt with privately because things were done biblically because mm-hmm. see the pur- purpose is not to make people embarrassed in front of church Call them out if someone comes and, and, and gets mm-hmm. called out and they say yes pastor I'm wrong and they have a repented heart and they and they're willing to continue on it gets dealt with privately brother Derek you come up to me and say pastor you know I I, I messed up and I did this and this and this and, and you have a repented heart you know that purpose is not to bury you mm-hmm. <laughs> the purpose is to help you up and, and and part of that is trying to help you privately without people having to know about it. and you see that's a thing people don't understand the many other cases where things have been dealt public uh, privately and the persons have continued on mm-hmm. and they've learned from their mistake and continued on because the purpose is restoration mm-hmm. it's when things don't get done right and then people gossip about it and then people in the past uh, the church leadership the last one to know about it it gets really messy it's messy and, it's and sometimes there are other consequences as a result mm-hmm. sadly exactly. so i i do have one more thing because like that actually just brought up another concern i guess like so uh in uh like we, we've we've seen the news we've seen a lot of things that have been going on especially like we've seen uh hillsong we've seen mm-hmm. uh southern baptist convention uh we've seen the catholic church uh where a lot of people had like have uh overstepped on like their own power right and uh, they have uh touched hurt uh just done awful things to a lot of their congregants bo- both boys and girls um and uh, then uh, what ends up happening is that like oh you have a repentant heart so okay then let's deal with this privately so at what point is like the threshold like all right this isn't a private matter anymore this needs to be dealt with publicly and you need to actually be punished either to uh, to the extent that the church can and or if this is the case the law Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the whole point. The law, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, if, it's if, if it's illegal, <laughs> the church a has a has a responsibility to deal with it legally. Unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Um, it's very very uh, hard because yeah, it's not easy because you might see a person that really really is repentant of doing it, but if they've broken a law, they also have a responsibility to answer in the legal system that we're in according to the bible that we have to honor the laws of the king of the of the land where we at where we're at where that person has to also um 
pay and, and, and deal with the laws of the land. Um, thankfully, we haven't had to cross that. But it's it, it would be very hard in that case if you see someone that's very repentant and everything. But part of that repentant, you know, see, that's a, one thing, too. It's like I've seen people that are truly repentant and people say that they are sorry about what they did, but they're not repentant because they're not willing to deal with the consequences. Mm-hmm. And see, a person that truly is repentant will exactly. most likely submit to whatever consequences have to be done. And, 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 and unfortunately, yeah, so, yeah, and I think going back to what you said about Hillsong and all that stuff, that's important for us to also, uh, we can't police people, but we can set up protocols for our own protection as a church, where if you're going to be part of the leadership, you choose to be part of the ship, you choose to be, it's not uh, compulsory, it's it's a voluntary, where you choose to be part of the leadership, then okay, hey, we don't want to be alone in a room with someone by ourselves and stuff like that. That's uh, protocols and rules that we set up for ourselves. Mm-hmm. as a church leadership to protect ourselves especially with kids <laughs> you know especially with kids today um, but th- that's different from what we're talking about policing people in okay. their homes and in their private lives yeah I mean I had I had an understanding of like <laughs> just wanted to make sure like let's clear that air like yeah. I know the church has like the American church has been or like the individual local churches of the world have been like like there's been like almost like a disease across the well, I think there was across. a lot of cover up because of shame and it's not about that it's about what is right in God's eyes and yeah, that's the thing. error that they made unfortunately yeah, and church, we can all fall can in be, that so we need to be careful of, with yeah. that and instead and see even I, I would argue in the case like for example the Southern Baptist Convention okay the person uh, comes out. They, they, I mean, they, they, they were repented. They maybe did something. A, it was something that also dealt with the law. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't have just been kept. But even if it's something that's not has to do with the law, but it is something that is going to affect your leadership because it's going to be known one way or another. Um, it that's where you would advise the person that really is repented to confess that before the church Mm -hmm. so that it's clear as the air and that people know about it and then it doesn't look like you're covering it up and then stuff like that Mm -hmm. and 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 then there's there's forgiveness from the church and and you move on from it and 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 you can deal with that as 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 time goes by but when you try to cover things up and stuff like that it just makes things more complicated that's what happened with the southern convection not only trying to cover it up for love's sake but they made things worse and not only that, but it was a thing that should have also been dealt with with the law yeah. because it was illegal what the person did. I also want to mm-hmm. just clarify when cover up also means silence, meaning you know about it, you don't say anything. Because mm-hmm. I think that's a card, many of us, because it's an easy card to take. Uh, we can make that mistake as well and unfortunately contribute to a messier situation for taking the easy route of just not saying anything and when it should be brought to you know pastor and having him deal with that okay so uh do we have any more comments that's it no great okay so uh again thank you listener for uh for listening uh on this podcast uh if you want to submit your own question or you want to follow up on this topic maybe something completely new you can go ahead and submit your question to www.ibbvn.org slash deeper roots there you'll find all the other episodes that we've recorded you also find uh, uh the other places that we are uh, uh streaming the podcast um but we hope that you will uh come back and listen to another episode thank you Thank you for listening to Deeper Roots. If you want to submit a question, follow up on something we talked about on the podcast, or you want to find us online, you can go to our webpage, which is ibbvn.org slash deeper roots. Deeper Roots is a ministry of Iglesia Biblica Baptista Vidanueva, which is a local church in Castro Valley, California. And you can learn more about us and our church by going to our website, ibbvn.org.